So the Bible has no problem with ancestral worship. This is according to Prophet Clive Porter, uh, who is from a very interesting church. He used to be a Christian, uh, a Christ-professing pastor, and now he's since renounced his faith. He's a Sangoma. He calls himself, I think it's, he calls himself Gogo or something, you know. So th this is basically part of the trend of a lot of pastors embracing African spirituality. And when they embrace it, they want to now marry it with Christianity and try and make the Bible say what they want the Bible to say. So we're going to watch that video today, react to it. It's something that we've been meaning to get to. A lot of people have asked us to give our thoughts. So today we're going to try and give you a very thorough response to this video. And I've got my brother, Chris. How are you doing today, man? I'm all well, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, I know it's all good. And yes, by the grace of God that we we able to do these videos and bring light to the kingdom mm -hmm. of, of God in every way. You know, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to do this one and to help many people. I mean, the scriptures did say that many false prophets will come. So we need mm -hmm. to keep watch of them. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's yeah. get into our video. Then. Bob. Sibo. Little in the pipe building a All right. Um, number one, the pipe building a man is loose. Nineteen from the man understand if you get good. Because Uncle Nkul Maga Vergmos Kuchapa Trega Exodus. Uncle Nkul Nkul Abraham Maga Isaac and Oga Jacob. Ebo. Labantu Ebo. All right. Thing he said about Jesus. Matthew chapter number one. Let's buy the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Uban Wazalaba, Uban Wazalaba, Uban Wazalaba. Who's a figure? Good Jesus. So again, Ko Umuntu Maga Pilem Shabi Nonge Nazos. Now let's buy the same Matthew chapter number seventeen from verse number one. Who Jesus pays going down the mountain of transfiguration. Let's buy the Uma Umethi Maga Put Jesus Njal Maga pays going down. Utata o Peter, no James, no Johan. Let's buy the Who Jesus Lapo Wakuluma, no Moses, no Elijah. In the Bible, there's no record with the batini between them. Because Lawa and Banzozi are the ministry of Jesus. O Moses is the ministry of Jesus. O Elijah is the prophetic man. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Bible, the Masega Buya, which is, he was transfigured. He was changed into a different person. His face was shining. Power. We don't worship ancestors. We don't worship ancestors. We honor them. Okay. In order for you to know where you're going, you must know where you come from. Let's talk about Hey, there you have it. So yeah. there's a lot of interesting things here, Chris. And I want to start with the Abraham story, but there's two sure. principles that you have to understand if you're going to try and base your belief on the ancestors, on the Bible. There's two things you're going to have to do. Number one, you have to reduce the authority of the Bible. So in other words, you have to reduce the Bible and, and actually claim that the Bible contradicts itself where the Bible Absolutely. in some parts speaks against ancestral worship and then in, in yeah. some parts it says yes to it. So that means you have to bring the Bible down and, and basically tear it apart. That's yeah. the first thing. The second thing, you also have to reduce the status of Jesus Christ. Because you'll notice something very interesting that he did there. He said, And then he says, Moses yeah. and Elijah were the ones that were basically carrying the ministry of Jesus or were in charge. Is, now, what does, that, do? what does that do to Jesus? It brings him down. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It, it yeah. puts him below the prophets. You know, uh -huh. It puts him below Moses. It puts him below Elijah. So th that's yes. a principle. If you ever try and do this, you're going to have yeah. to actually do that. You're going to have to reduce the Bible. You're going to have to reduce mm -hmm. Jesus. And when you reduce Jesus, because he said, you know, we worship God and he's great. But at the same time, the same God that you say you worship is the same one that you are reducing and <laughs> making him low. So, <laughs> Chris, what's your thoughts on, on this Abraham thing? Yeah, uh, you know, there's a lot of misconception within this video um, that this uh, false prophet Cliff is saying. You know, and uh, 
You know, on the part that you're mentioning that he's refusing Jesus Christ, actually, Jesus, in his words, says that, I think from the book of Mark, he says that mm -hmm. by your traditions, you nullify the word of God. So mm -hmm. Jesus was fully aware that traditions mm -hmm. have this tendency of really nullifying mm -hmm. the word and the power and the full divinity of who God is, mm -hmm. you know. And so mm -hmm. the Israelites were taught to be against and to go against um, talking with the mediums. I, I think if we can read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter eight because i love what Stevo asked in the in in the earlier of the in, in the early version of the video to say that what does the bible say we don't want to speak what we think we want what the bible says now deuteronomy chapter eight from verse 10 it says that let none let no one be found among you who sacrifices their sons or their daughters in the fire who practices divination or sorcery who interprets omens who engages in witchcraft and we know very well when we look at this all the things that are done by inyanga and all so mm -hmm. they under the category but look at 11 mm -hmm. it says no one should be found among you who casts spells who is a medium or who is a spiritist or who mm -hmm. consults the dead so definitely, Stibo, as the guy who asked the question in the in the early, uh, early video, he, the Bible is against consulting the diet Absolutely. of ego in essence, because it tells us in the in that last line of verse eleven, no one should be found among you who consults the dead. And we see mm. in that case that definitely the scripture is against this. Um, look at look at Isaiah chapter eight, and let's see what it says. The Bible says, "Should not a people inquire of their God?" Definitely. Why then consult the dead on behalf of the living? So we see very well from this concept. And then verse 20 says, consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. So we, very, we see very clear that the scripture tells us um, that, that if anyone does not teach, seeking after God and inquiring of God, but yet they teach to inquire of the dead before the living, then we know very well that those people are from the kingdom of darkness. They do not have light in them. They're full of dark. So as much as Prophet Cliff is definitely lost because then if you teach to inquire and to seek after the dead, then you are from the kingdom of darkness. So I think let Absolutely. me just pause it there and let's hear your points, my brother. Yeah, I think for me, first of all, what we need to understand is that um, what Job says in, uh, I think it's Job chapter 10, verses 21, um, it says, Before I go to the place of no return, to the land of gloom and utter darkness. So in other words, when you're dead, you go to a place where you cannot return back to the land of the living. You are there, you're gone. It's the same as the story of Abraham, you know, and uh, 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 Lazarus and, and, and the rich man. There was this, this schism between them, but also they nobody could go back and say, I'm going to warn people or yeah. go back and say, no, you must live your life like this. Or to say, yeah. no, you need to sacrifice or pass and then your life, you can't come back and even come back as a consultant, you know? Yeah. You are cut off completely and you are, there's Absolutely. basically no return. So I think that for me uh, is very important that the Bible says there's no return. You are gone, you're gone. And I think yeah. there's also an emotional side, you know, when somebody dies in your family, you, the, yeah. the automatic thing is that you want is for them to come back. The automatic thing is that if I could just speak to them one more time, if I could you know? see them one more time, you know what I'm saying? So you already yeah. have that desire. So this is why it's so natural, even for, for white people as well, that they'll yeah. go to a graveyard and they'll speak to their loved one. It's a natural human thing. It's got nothing sure. to do with Africanness. It's just a tendency that we don't want to let go of the people we love because we love them. Yeah. But I think it's important as well that although there's an emotional side to it, that the reality says mm -hmm. that these people are cut off. They can't advise yeah. you. They can't solve your life. You have to fix your own life. Your life is in your own hands. There's yeah. no one who's going to come back from the dead and solve your problems. So I sure. just think that that's important. Uh, but I want to go now, Chris, to the, you know, he goes to the New Testament and then sure. in the New Testament, he first talks about Jesus or Jesus and his genealogy. Yeah. And a lot of people will say, you know, I think Joshua Mubonga would like to emphasize the genealogy of Jesus as something pointing to Jesus and his ancestors. And I think people make more of that thing more than it actually is. If you let me just show you a couple of verses here. If you uh -huh. look at um, Hebrews chapter seven, verse three, yeah. it's a verse talking about Melchizedek. Melchizedek. 
And it yeah. says he is without father, he's without mother, he's without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, resembling yeah. the son of God. He remains priest forever. Now this tells us that Jesus didn't actually have a genealogy. Why sure. didn't Jesus have a genealogy? Because Jesus' father is the father in heaven. He, he was born sure. of a virgin. He doesn't have an earthly sure. father. So even yes. when we say Jesus is the son of David, this is said in a symbolic way. It's not Correct. a biological, literal way because yeah. Joseph is not Jesus' biological father. So that genealogy, no. we mustn't make too much of that genealogy trying to reduce Jesus to make him like us to have this genealogy. He doesn't have it. He's born of a virgin. He has a supernatural Absolutely. birth. So I Absolutely. think sometimes we overemphasize, uh, or you know, I, I think one theologian said, we are silent where the Bible is silent, and we are loud where the Bible is loud. And so sometimes sure. we are loud where the Bible is not loud. The Bible is saying something, <laughs> but it's not yeah. loud. You know what I'm saying? But I think we go so yeah. loud, you know, and we go to, to one verse in Matthew 17, and we and we we blow that thing up, and we summarize the whole Bible verse mm. based on that, just that, that one verse. Here's another uh, interesting one from First Timothy chapter one verse four. Mm-hmm. It's it says, uh, or to devote themselves to myths and to <coughs> endless genealogies. Such things promote contro- controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, uh, which yeah. is by faith. So sometimes when we focus on these genealogies, when we focus on sure. the fact that, you know, uh, I am, you know, I am this guy, I'm I'm Upele, or Zalwangula, mm-hmm. or and all those things. Right, that stuff yes. is great. But I think sometimes we can elevate that so much and make it the most important thing, where you've got these endless genealogies and you want to define yourself in an earthly way. So those things mm-hmm. can actually lead to controversy, and that's what he's doing. So much, you know, yeah. he's, he's focusing on on genealogies, and that leads to controversy. But rather, we should be focusing on advancing God's work. So, again, we need to be loud where the Bible is loud. Where the Bible is silent, we must be silent. Where the Bible says something, we can see that thing, but don't make it more than what it is. Uh, I don't know if you have anything on on that, Chris. Yeah, um, so much. I think there's a point that he also shares on that. Thank you very much for for that um, explanation. There's a point that he Mm -hmm. shares as well. And on that part, we're trying to show the importance of genealogy, you know, and Mm -hmm. so that we, it can be linked to ancestors and honor those who have came before us. Mm -hmm. Understand something. All of us as humans in this world, we have ancestors. We come from somewhere. We, 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 we we are descendants. And this is how I tend to define what ancestor is. Ancestors Mm -hmm. are people that have come from our family bloodlines of which I am the descendants. Right. Mm, and then, mm. but now it's a different thing when I then say that I am honoring my ancestors by consulting, by doing rituals, or by doing certain things, or praying, or asking them of anything. Mm. To the Christian concept, that then becomes um, ancestor worship. It's an ancestor worship because the focus is on honoring one's ancestors. And we know mm. very well that in many various cultures within the African concept, even Europe as well, um, the concept mm. of honoring ancestors, and it, it's believed that they are even going, going to help, they are even going to um, give guidance spiritually, they are even going to give wisdom in many various ways. You know, So that's mm. where people tend to um, lay their thing. And here's the thing, if we begin to say that we want to put ancestors in this um, office, and to say that mm. they are working and they will they will they will intercede before the before God and the living, there is gonna be a serious clash and there's gonna be a serious Absolutely. problem. Because yeah. the ancestors are in the office of mediate, mediation. And mm. we know when Jesus comes, Jesus takes that office. So Jesus threatens the concept of ancestor worship because Jesus mm. then says that I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one mm. will see the Father except of them going through mm. me. That yeah. places him in the office of mediation between the father Absolutely. and the living, you know. Absolutely. So automatically that dismantles the concept of, 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 of ancestor worship in essence. And there's a part where mm. the uh, prophet, uh, they don't worship ancestors. <laughs> you know, it, it's, yeah, it's, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, yeah. it's so sad when you see this um, an, I call it an unintellectual concept of continuously in denial of a concept that you do the moment Mm. you start to consult that is a form of worship and Mm. when we define the term worship worship is a form of reference and a commitment to a higher power worship can take place in various forms such as through a prayer through a song through a dance and even also through an offering worship can be directed to a deity or a spiritual being 
Worship can also be seen as an act of demonstrating respect for a figure of an object such as an icon. So including our ancestors as well when we are um, demonstrating that form of respect. So the reason, as, as I said, why we call it ancestor worship is because the general concept is that it's focusing in a type of worship of honoring and paying respect to one's ancestors. In many cultures, mm. it is believed that ancestors are the key source of spiritual wisdom, guidance that can be accessed and consulted. Mm. Rituals such as yeah. offering, sacrifices, and prayers are used to honor one's ancestors and also to ask and seek from them. So, Mina, I don't know when people say they don't pray and, <laughs> and worship ancestors. When you begin to say Nyatela, when you begin to say protect, when you say um, our, my, my, our, my, they are not happy, that those things in jail, they are a form of worship. Worship and prayer can come in many various forms of ways, you know. So Absolutely. Not only, if, if you want to do this, rather do it, do it in your own accord. But don't try to justify mm. it and say you don't in our worship about Bagiti. You That's are praying exactly what them. you do. You know, it's it's literally there. Do you look at the definition of what prayer, as I did explain, and what worship is? It tells you that you're doing all these things. So, mm. yeah. So, so uh, you know what, what is funny uh, for me is that this is the one person that exposes that ancestral worship or yeah. belief in the ancestors is actually worship. Because see how he reduced Jesus and then elevated sure. The ancestors, yes, right? Yes, yes. Not yeah. saying Moses and Elijah ancestors, because yeah. we're going to explain to you just now that they are not ancestors, or yeah. that they they didn't die, you know. Uh, and we'll sure. we'll explain why we believe they didn't die, but but you see that his whole elevation there is to reduce Jesus, like you were saying, as mediator, and then push yeah. up these guys who are in charge of Jesus' oh, ministry. Yeah. Now another thing that's very important, if you look at that Matthew chapter seventeen verse, God says. You know, when Peter's speaking and and God says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, listen yeah. to him. So the question is, should we listen to our ancestors or should we listen to the son, right? Yeah. God didn't say to Peter, listen to, you know, um, to Elijah and Moses, because those were his forefathers as well. You know, yeah. Moses and Elijah, yes. he could have easily said, these are my ancestors, let me speak to them. Yes. God said, we must listen to the voice of the son. We mustn't listen to other voices or... So even Absolutely. if you are, you're having dreams in the night, you know, yeah. God says, listen to the voice of my son. So the question then would yeah. be, you know, is do you worship or do you live your life or surrender your life to be guided by God or by Jesus? Or do you want it to be guided by your family? There's an interesting verse in Ezekiel chapter 20, verses 18. If you can just put it up there, uh, uh, Chris, if you don't mind. Uh, it says, I said to their children in the wilderness, do not follow the statutes of your parents or keep their laws yeah. or defile yourself with idols. So here sure. God is saying to the children uh, that, you know, I said to, to their children in the wilderness, do not follow mm -hmm. the statutes of your parents or keep yeah. their laws. So in other words, your parents, if they are going against God, right? Yeah. You shouldn't follow them. Right, you should follow the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But why don't they mention the father of Abraham who was Terah? Because yeah. if you look at the book of Joshua, uh, Joshua tells us quite clearly in Joshua 24, verse 2, uh, it says, And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the river in the old time, even Terah, the yeah. father of Abraham and the father of Neha, and they served other gods. This is yeah. why it's the God of Abraham and not the God of the father of Abraham, because sure. Abraham served the one true God, right? Yeah. He's the one that comes with the revelation when the whole world is worshiping thousands of God and God gods yeah. and Kemet, 2,000 gods, right? Mm. Abraham yes. has this revelation to say there's one God. So we're following that one God, but we can't stop at Abraham because the Muslims will also say Abraham is our father. And so we say it's Abraham and Isaac because the Muslims will not acknowledge Isaac. So we say Isaac. Isaac. Right. But then we say Jacob because it's the God of Israel. Jacob is Israel. And Israel, there you will find the fulfillment of that prophecy that God promised to Abraham that the Messiah will, born, will be born through this nation and then the whole world will be blessed. So this is why we say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's got nothing to do um, with ancestral worship. But I want to also end it. Uh, at least on my side, 
yeah um to to also highlight to people you know that it's important that you understand that your life needs to be guided by god right absolutely and if you look at the apostles i think it's acts chapter 5 verse 29 and these mm. guys were being persecuted they were being beaten and Peter and the other apostles replied to the people who were saying, stop preaching in the name of God. And the question was, or not the question, but the response was, we must obey God rather than human beings. Absolutely. So this then creates a little bit of a dilemma to say, it matters more what God thinks about me than what my family thinks about me. Absolutely. I need to please God rather than to try and please my ancestors or to please yeah. Even my 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 family, right? Yes. What's important is that you are obeying God. If God says don't worship and speak to the dead, it doesn't yeah. matter what vision you're gonna get, it doesn't matter what your tradition says, what matters is what God says. Now, this doesn't Absolutely. mean that we we as Christians are promoting that we mustn't honor our, our fathers and mothers. That's no. one of the Ten Commandments. It says we must honor them. You know, when yeah. when uh, Isaac's wife died, Rachel. It says that he, he made sure to build a nice uh, uh, tomb for her so that, you know, she'll be buried there. So the Bible doesn't say we mustn't, you know, uh, bury our, 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 our family. You can even go clean the grave, but yeah. don't speak to the grave, right? Yeah. So you can also honor your, 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 your family by saying, well, my father taught me hard work and I'm going to honor mm -hmm. him by living out those values. But sure. where we must make a, a, a U-turn or a turn away from our families, just like Abraham did, and just like how God commanded the children of Israel under Joshua to say, don't follow your ways of, of your forefathers, follow my mm -hmm. ways. The same way that Rahab, when uh, 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 you know the destruction was coming on Canaan, yeah. she sided with the children of Israel. She chose yeah. the God of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob over her own people. Right, yeah. so we must always take yeah. God's side over Absolutely. anything. Right, if, if my whole family will stand up against God and rise up against against God, I will stand with God. That's really what what it means that we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We don't worship idols. Our lives are not guided by idols, but we listen to to the Son of God, who is now our mediator. Chris, Amen. anything for you? As yeah, you know, in 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 the closing um, of this man where he says that um, for us to know where we are going, we need to where we need to know where we come from. And I believe mm. in context, he's trying to say that um, to display that we people need to know their ancestors and everything and honor them before we can go ahead. But I need mm. to make it very clear to say that we don't find our identity in ancestors. We don't mm. find our identity from where we come from. As believers mm, of Jesus Christ, we find our identity in Christ, you know. Mm. And so, Book of Galatians, chapter two, verse twenty. Then it emphasizes um, being all with Christ, no longer living for ourselves, but Him. Mm. That means our identity is in Jesus Christ. And so we, and 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 the scriptures even tells us that we need to forget of the new of the old things because now a new thing is being done. So, I understand the importance of knowing where we come from. Matter of fact, yeah. when you look at um, David, um, I think in 51, Psalm 51, he's praying and that mm -hmm. God forgive, forgive me for my transgressions, yeah. forgive me for my iniquities. Mm -hmm. We know very well that the term iniquity um, is defined as or can, can be explained as sins that were inherently um, received from us as well. That could be including meaning sins that were taken from our ancestors as well. So that's where the repentance needs to be done, even for those who came before us and acknowledge that we could have done wrong, things have been done wrong, mm -hmm. and that's the importance. But it's not saying that we, just because we, we need to know where we come from, is to say that and so on. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Because either way, yeah. the future is in God, and God is the one that holds the, the future and everything. So as a child mm. of God, your identity is found in Christ. And I think all these things will be said mm. to say that you need to know where you come from to know where you are going to. It's, 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 you need to understand the context of it. It could be misused. It could be misguided. It could be missaid. Mm. And in this, in this case, it's not used in the correct term. But we mm. need to know that in every way, Jesus Christ is the one where we carry our identity from. Now Absolutely. the word of God says, may I become low, O Lord, so that you might be full and be increased and, and be mm. high in every way that I might live for you in every possible mm. way. So, yes. 
Yeah, and maybe Chris, just to 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 quickly just share, uh, you know, about Moses and Elijah, right? We don't believe yeah. those two people died. I think who, Elijah, sure. there's no dispute. The Bible tells us that he was taken up by the Lord. Correct. So, so, so Elijah's he you, you, you didn't die the same way Jesus didn't die. So you can't call him an ancestor. Now, uh-huh. people will always refer to Deuteronomy and say, well, Deuteronomy 34 says, uh, you know, Moses died there, and now here he is appearing there. How can, you know, then that, that makes him that Jesus was speaking to his ancestor. Um, so how would you, you deal with, with that part? No, most definitely. And I'll just like to address that. Actually, Elijah does not have an ancestry to the Israelites. He, he was just a prophet um, who God was mm. using to, um, to work through that. Um, yes, um, definitely. Moses is the one that has genealogy, and the Israelites point back to him. I mean, he's the one who took them out yeah. out of Egypt and to save them and lead them to to the promised land. But here's mm-hmm. one thing: um, even though yes, the scripture in Deuteronomy does state that um, Moses died, but we see a supernatural afterlife that is occurring over here because the way the scripture does tell us that no one knows where God mm-hmm. buried him. So Absolutely. Moses was buried by God alone, you know, and yes. I was checking one of the writings of the scholars and majority of the scholars acknowledge and believe that the afterlife, I don't want to say it's death because death is when mm. death is conquered and you are dead and we can be yeah. able to trace back your bones. But in this case, yeah. I'm calling it an afterlife experience because they shifted from this life that we know and they went mm. to another um, um life so mm. the afterlife experience of moses um as the scholars do acknowledge to say that it's it's a supernatural one to mostly who are who attest it or compare it to the one of elijah as well because mm. his his bones could not be found his body could not be found mm-hmm. nowhere so the the concept is that we cannot compare moses and elijah to our mere ancestors who we are able mm. to go and dig up their bodies these two yeah. figures, we are unable to dig um, their bodies. They, they are nowhere to be found, you know. So it's it's, it's 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 a far it's a far fetched one to say that we want to compare them to ancestors to justify the reason why people should consult uh, their ancestors. These are two different concepts, and none of them even reaches. Matter of fact, to be to be direct on this one, the Israelites mm-hmm. in any way, if we were to use the Bible, the Israelites yeah. in no way in their culture, in their bringing in every way, they were never taught to consult the dead. Never, Absolutely. never, never taught. No. When mm-hmm. God calls and appoints um, Saul to be the king, and uh, Samuel is the prophet and assisting, mm-hmm. God directs them to chase all the mediums and the sorcerers, any concept of, yeah. of consulting the dead. So mm. in all their culture and in all their way and their, their living and their traditions, the concept of communicating with dead spirits was not allowed mm. and was forbidden. And we know very well one of the reasons why Saul died was the reason for that he consulted the dead. Mm. So I think to leave Absolutely. it there on my point to say that Moses um, actually, his afterlife experience was a supernatural one and was not a normal one compared to our ancestors. Absolutely, man. I think you said it well. And I think there's an interesting verse um, that people can look up as well if you don't believe us. <clears throat> if you look there yeah. um, at Jude chapter 1, uh, verse 9, uh, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil and disputing about the body of Moses, did not bring against him uh, a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. So you can see that, number one, it's God that buries Moses. Nobody knows where his grave is. Number two, we know that we see that his body is not there in the grave. Now there, somewhere in the spiritual Some, realm, yeah. there's a contention of his body. And then so, there now he appears with Moses, uh, sorry, with Elijah and Jesus. So, you know, one can try and, and, and make a case to say that this person, the same way that Elijah didn't die, you know, God took him up. And the same way that he took Jesus up as well, that Jesus yeah. didn't die. And these three people are not ancestors, all of them. And the same yeah. way that one day when Jesus Christ appears, the church will be taken up as well. Without Some people will, will be taken up without dying. Um, right. so, yeah. so maybe that could also be pointing us to that. So you can't make a case from that unique event and talk about Moses. When Moses is, you can see that there's a uh, you know mystery around his death. It's not a normal situation that you can say, right, I'm going to build a doctrine around this because I'm seeing everyone in the Bible in a similar scenario where they appear to Jesus. It was just one incident, yeah. one chapter, you know, two people, one of them clearly didn't die. The other one, there's mystery. You can't 
say the Bible endorses something when you're just basing it on a verse. I always say this, that when we interpret the Bible, we use verses that are clear to interpret what is not clear. But what he's doing is taking what's not clear and he's trying to define the whole scripture using that. But there are verses that are quite clear that says you you should not let a sorcerer to live or permit a witch to live. Um, And so... And I think that's Exodus 22, verse 18. So there's, there's lots of verses that we've shared to demonstrate that the Bible really doesn't endorse that practice. Chris, anything to close with? Yeah, no, thank you very much, Barra, um, for the wisdom of the Lord upon our lives. And, mm. you know, the devil will always try by all means to, because mm. when we went to look at these things, and people are going to take them lightly. These are very serious things. You know, I think there's mm-hmm. the scripture that we read in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19 or 10. Mm. Yeah, it's 19. It tells you that those who are teaching the concept really to say that people should consult the dead instead of the living mm. are really from Absolutely. the kingdom of darkness. You know, Absolutely. and Rena, we, 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 we tend to focus on things that are very temporary things that will not benefit us. Look, I love my ancestors. I, I understand that. But they too are waiting for their own judgment. You know, Absolutely. and so how do you need help from someone who's waiting from their own <laughs> <laughs> People will try. People will try out there to find many various things. You know, they will try to find about the one year Mary. It's, it's, it's not people of God. Yeah. You know? And here the scripture is talking up, uh, for itself. You know, so go and read the scriptures for yourself. Go and read the scriptures for yourself. If you do need assistance on this, don't mind to um, share your comments and ask for um, scriptures. We will help you in this thoroughly. But this is one of the things that will lead people to be in an eternal separation with God. Because mm. the concept of communicating with the dead is really a concept from the kingdom of darkness. It's not the, from the kingdom mm. of light. And anything that you do that is opposing under the kingdom, that is opposing to the kingdom of God, is definitely mm. you will become an enemy to to God. God says that if anyone is a friend of the world, then those people are an enemy, they are my enemy. So let's Absolutely. do by all means to die to ourselves and allow that even those things that we might love and want and wish, I love what my brother said, to say that this thing, Yahoo, when someone has passed on, you long for mm. them and that's where you get to see their importance in, in, mm. in your life. You know, So we know that those needs are there. We know that those feelings are there. But let us yeah. not give in to, to these things. And let's just live for God in every way. God has given us the blood of Jesus Christ. We no longer need to make any sacrifice. Jesus says that mm. no blood of bulls or any animals can heal and, and, and can forgive sins only through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we, there's no part where the concept of ancestors take part in really um, mm. hierarchy of the kingdom of God in any essence. Mm. So let's try away Absolutely. from all this. These things are what our fathers have done. They were taught these things from 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 by 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 dark by by, by dark spirits. They were taught these things from an, by unclean mm. spirits. Let's not use it in the name of culture to try to justify Absolutely. and learn as well and to lead our generations to to death in in such concepts. So that is all for me, and I pray that made a lot to help you in all. I don't know if there's anything from your side. Bro. Yeah, I think just to to end with saying, guys, uh, we'd love to have you on our show as well. You know, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask, if you even if you just don't really believe what we're saying and you'd like to engage us and ask us questions, I've put my email there. If you go to our page, you'll see it's Bistrat for Africa uh, at gmail.com. And you can send us an email and say, I'd like to come on and discuss any topic that you'd like to, to talk about. Send an email, say, I want to talk about this topic. I want to ask you and we can schedule that. Uh, it's not a problem, but we really do prefer engaging with people this year. So, so please bad. feel free to to just send us an email and uh, we'll be happy to have you on the show. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.